Hello everybody and welcome to this, my first of two videos on the Asahi Pentax. And realistically, you could say every single Pentax camera that came after this is just a version of the Asahi Pentax because starting with the cameras that came after this, the K and the S, they were no longer just the Asahi Pentax, they were the K version and the S version. So I think there's a very solid argument to be made that this is the Asahi Pentax and every designation, whether it's K, S, K1000, LX, K3, like is filming this video, is simply a different version of this original camera. The Asahi Pentax is an interchangeable lens SLR, meaning that you can take the lens off and put a different one on at any time when you're not taking a picture without it impairing the image. It has no light meter built into it. It has shutter speeds of one second up to one five hundredth built into the two shutter speed dials, and we'll see how those use. But the shutter times are in the old algorithmic progression, not the shutter times you're used to today. So we'll see that in a little bit. The viewfinder magnification is 100% with a 58 millimeter lens and you get 100% frame coverage with a 58 millimeter lens. And that is engineering that to the best of my knowledge stayed with these cameras, at least through the SNH series and into I think the Spotmatics as well. Um, one of the beautiful things about Pentax, this has always been the viewfinders, which are absolutely lovely. The focusing screen on this is a Fresnel and Microprism focusing screen. And what it looks like, and unfortunately I, I no longer have a lens that can look inside of the viewfinders on these, but what it looks like is you have a central Microprism circle surrounded by a Fresnel field. By today's standards, the viewfinder is dark, and it's not as sharp as modern cameras. Even cameras by modern, I mean anything that is made today back to the 80s. Um, it's much dimmer and softer than that, so it's not quite as easy to focus as modern viewfinders, but it is wide open with no distractions. There's no meter, no display information at all. It is a very pure and beautiful shooting experience looking through the viewfinder of, of this camera. The flash sync speed on this camera is 1 50th of a second. The Asahi Pentax was targeted at advanced to professional users. Now this was from the late 50s. It predated all of the other advanced to professional SLRs. This is older than the, the Nikon F, older than anything seriously professional from Canon, or well, older than Olympus cameras, SLR cameras at least, for sure. Um, this was realistically the first contender for high-end professional SLRs, at least coming out of Japan. So uh, there may have been some, some Zeiss SLRs in the 50s that could have been used by professionals, but were not quite as robust as this was. It was the first 35 millimeter SLR with a pentaprism. Uh, the first recognizably modern 35 millimeter SLR with an instant return mirror. An instant return mirror is something you are used to, but may not even recognize was at one point not a thing. And on this camera, if we advance it here, We'll take a picture and the mirror flips right back down. That's the instant return mirror. That was a huge, huge deal on this camera. Before this camera, the mirror would not return until you advance the film and the action of advancing the film would also return the mirror. So um, this was a very nice feature at the time, a very, very high-end feature. The Asahi Flex 2B, which, which was the predecessor to this camera, also had an instant return mirror, but it was not an SLR. So that's the main difference. The Asahi Flex um, 2B, well, I guess it was kind of an SLR, but it, it was not a pentaprism SLR. 
the Asahi Flex bodies had the focusing screen on the top. They all had waist level viewfinders. Um, I used to have a couple of them and then they died and were not repairable. This was also the first 35 millimeter film camera with an advanced lever instead of an advanced knob, which is a huge innovation. And it was the first 35 millimeter SLR with a re rewind crank instead of just a rewind knob. Pentax was the only camera maker at the time using micro prisms in their focusing screen. Another huge innovation was the micro prism focusing screen. And by the standards of the day this was made, this had an incredible array of lenses going from 35 millimeter on the wide end to 500 millimeter on the long end at launch. And in the 50s, the lenses were all still being designed by nerds with slide rules. And they didn't have calculators helping, or computers, helping them to develop lens formulae. And I mean, lens calculations are super, super complex. Like that, it's some amazing math that goes into these. And to do them by hand required constant revision, constant questioning and evaluation, and years and years of work. The R&D that went into this lens here is certainly greater than the R&D that would go into almost any lens being made today in terms of the number of man hours and time because they would have had entire teams working on lenses like this, not one guy sitting behind a computer trying to make all of the engineering work. I mean, really impressive, impressive engineering that was developed to be put into this camera. This was made by the Asahi Optical Company in Tokyo, Japan in 1957 only. It was preceded by the Asahi Flex 2. It was concurrent with nothing else. This was the only camera Asahi was making that year. And it was followed by the Pen Asahi Pentax K and S bodies. So as we do, let's go over everything on this camera and take a look at what it has. We start on the top, but technically this the front here with the strap lugs, which is where you connect your camera strap. Here we have the film rewind knob and lever. This ring around it is an ASA reminder dial. ASA is the same thing as ISO. When the American Standards Association stopped stand governing film speeds, uh, ISO took over. This is why a lot of Americans say ISO instead of ISO because it's especially Americans of my age and older, it is drilled into our head to say ASA as an acronym. So what you would do with this dial is there are three different colors, green, orange, and white. And you would set the film, uh, film speed, and then the colors meant different things. So white would be black and white. Orange would be tungsten balanced slide film or color film in general. And green would be daylight balanced slide film or color film. And so this would allow you to remember what film speed and type you had loaded into the camera when you went to shoot pictures. It wouldn't tell you what brand, but this would be enough to know what you had in it to make sure that you exposed your images correctly and use the proper kind of light. Serial number. Over here we have the shutter speed dial. That black line in the middle of it is the index. It tells you your selected shutter speed. Shutter release button. Film advance lever right there and then a manually resetting frame counter. And when you load a new roll of film, there's an arrow here that tells you which way it is safe to turn this. Do not turn it the wrong way. When you load a new roll of film, you set this to about three clicks before zero. That looks right. And then when you advance your film to z after loading it, it will uh, be at zero. And, and I'll show you how to do that in the second video again as well. On the front, we have the low speed shutter dial. So on the top, that's the, the, the high speed shutter dial. Low speed shutter dial. Lens mount. PC ports for FP and X bulbs. Now FP are bulb bulbs. These are hard to get. You're probably not gonna get them. The flashes for them are obsolete. So don't worry about the FP. If you have one of these and plan to do flash photography, you will be using an X-Sync flash. So the X-Sync PC port is the only one you need to be concerned with. 
On the side, we have the film back release right here. You use that lever to open up the film back. On the back, we have the viewfinder. On the bottom, we have the film release button and the tripod bushing. And on the inside, we have a very Spartan interior. Uh, if you've seen enough of the videos that I've done, you've seen very complex camera interiors. This is basic. Film cassette chamber, film guide rails, shutter curtain, film tension sprocket, film take-up spool, film pressure plate, cassette retaining spring. So the, the film goes in here, the outer rails prevent the film from moving up and down as it travels, the inner rails are sandwiched against the film pressure plate to keep the film flat as it moves. The tension sprocket keeps the film from being pulled backwards by the spring memory that's developed in the plastic by being stored inside the cassette wound around a spool. The film take-up spool takes up the spool, or it takes up the film. When you push the film rewind button, now this guy moves freely and allows the film to be rewound. Some, note, some notes about the Asahi Pentax. The slow speed shutter dial right here on the front trumps the high speed shutter dial. So the slow speed shutter dial needs to be set to 1 25th in order for the high speed shutter dial to work. So if we set this to 1 5th, it doesn't matter that the high speed dial is not set to something. So if you're going to shoot at a high speed shutter speed, you need to make sure that your slow speed dial is set to 1 25th of a second. The next thing to note about the Asahi Pentax is that the shutter speed, the high speed shutter speed dial rotates with the action of the shutter and also with the action of the film advance. And that's basically the exact same mechanics as I oh, shouldn't say the exact same mechanics because I don't know what the inside of the camera looks like. It's the exact same function externally as the Leica rangefinders, the Zenits, and, and the other Leica clones where the shutter speed dial rotates. So a fun fact about the Asahi Pentax, there were some of these made in black. And it may be one of, if not the rarest, Pentax cameras today. Now, there were also some Asahi Pentax S cameras made in black, but I've seen pictures of those. I've seen three or four of them go up for auction in the last six years. I have never seen a black Asahi Pentax original go up for auction. So um, if there are rarer Pentaxes than that that were produced intentionally by the, cam by the, the maker, I'm not counting the, the couple of misprint K1000 bodies out there, I don't know of them. So if you are interested in collecting, in the, the challenge of collecting extremely rare cameras, a black Asahi Pentax is uh, probably gonna be worth the challenge. Some things not to do with your camera. Don't touch the shutter curtain. You can break your camera really easily. And I mean, I know one guy, Eric Hendrickson, as of late 2019 is still fixing these, but um, there, there's gonna come a day sometime when these will not be repairable, so you'll really wanna take care of it. Also, don't touch the mirror because you can desilver it, and while that won't affect metering because there's no meter in this camera, it will affect your focus ability and how bright the viewfinder is. Don't leave your camera or lenses in your car because heat can damage them. Uh, the heat can cause the oils to get really thin and get to places they shouldn't be, which can affect function. It can also, the cold can cause the oils to get really gummy and break down and then they won't work correctly either. And also, it's really easy to, to come back to a car with a broken window and no camera, even if you just run in to the rest stop really quickly after a long photo shoot, it's very easy to have stuff taken out of your car. So don't leave your camera gear in your car, even if you're just gonna be gone for a couple of minutes. Don't store your camera gear in a plastic bag or box unless you have a good rechargeable desiccant pack in there with them because moisture can get through plastic and it will cause fungus to grow and really it can ruin your camera, especially your lenses. Don't let your camera get wet because these are not weather sealed. And one of my Asahi flexes actually had gotten wet and the entire inside had rusted to the point that there all of the gears had rusted together, all, at least all of the ones that were made of ferrous metal. 
that was kind of heartbreaking to learn. Um, at any rate, don't let these get wet. And also, when you are done using it for the day, or before you store it, make sure to trip the shutter, because these have mechanical shutters, and when, when you advance the shutter, you're putting tension on some springs so that, that they can activate the shutter. And if they stay under tension for weeks or months or periods like that, then they'll start to develop a memory. And instead of springing back together really quickly, they'll spring it back together more slowly, which can affect things like shutter timing. And you, again, these are not something you can just send into any repairman and have fixed, so you want to kind of baby these cameras. And just remember, your Asahi Pentax is a precision tool and should be handled with care and respect. And as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. So this was my first of two videos going over the Asahi Pentax. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track in creating content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have questions or comments below, please leave those. I'm more than happy to answer them. I check comments every day or two. In the off chance that someone out there has actually used one of these to take photos, someone other than me, because these are not common cameras, and uh, there are not, a, a, I'm, I'm guessing that most of you who are watching this video today are watching to learn about this camera, not to learn how to use your copy of it. And, but if you have used one of these and you, have, you are an amateur photographer with photos taken on one of these, by all means, please leave a link in the description below. I'd be happy to see the work you've done with it. And uh, one last thing, thank you everybody very much for watching and we'll see you in the second part of this video series.